Hello, welcome back to Denmark 101. Now, as I always say, I am eager to have your questions. It seems one or two of you want to get me in trouble. So you've asked me to cover the topic of religion. So, uh, religion in Denmark from an American perspective. Now, I'm coming from the American Southwest. In the American Southwest, Arizona specifically, we have a very, large, a very large evangelical population, uh, uh, which is very devout, and then we have a very large Mormon population, or Latter-day Saints population, uh, as well as a fairly large other population as well. Uh, now, all other denominations uh, and, and faiths actually are represented, especially in Arizona, but those are the ones that are quite dominant. Um, now, it comes as no shock, I'm sure, to, um, to Danes, Americans, everybody else watching this, uh, that you know the U.S. is is quite religious. Now, coming to Denmark, uh, where unlike the United States, you have a state religion, uh, state church. Uh, it's 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 very interesting. It's very it's very different, right? Because even though the level of mm, perhaps agnostic behavior. Uh, or even atheist, uh, uh, atheists is, is, is quite high and, and proportionally very, very high, you still have a huge chunk of the population that associates or seems to associate, uh, and this is based on my observations as usual, right, but seems to associate um, as, as Christian. Now, I had an interesting conversation with a friend about this recently. Uh, in the U.S., you have uh, kind of a, a classification which you would call uh, a buffet Christian. So that's someone who, who doesn't consider themselves a Protestant or, or a Baptist anymore, uh, but they consider themselves um, Christian based on the Christian ideals, uh, some Christian dogma, but they want to pick and choose. They're not adhering too strictly to the texts, uh, and they treat it more as, as life guidance uh, and, and as a reference point. They look to it for, for some moral guidance and things along those lines. Um, I think when you're talking religion uh, in Denmark, um, you have a lot of people that associate still as culturally Christian, even though they may put very little stock in the religious texts themselves. Um, so even in, 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 in many conversations, there are people, uh, I, I would say a large chunk of the, of the Danish population, who enjoy elements of the tradition, the community, the, the rituals, uh, some of the, the social support that, that comes from the faith, uh, even though they may not believe in God or they may not actively believe in a lot of the religious dogma itself. And I would say that that's actually what you have uh, in the vast majority of instances. Um, so I'm just purely guessing, but maybe 85% of the population is split between um, atheist-leaning agnostics, atheists, uh, and then uh, what we can call uh, buffet Christians. Um, and, and so it's, of course, within a fairly, uh, a fair, fairly unified uh, tradition because almost everybody in the country is coming from the same religious background. Let me correct that. Almost all of the Christians in the country are coming from the same, you know, this same collective uh, denomination and faith. Um, but when it actually comes down to it, you see a lot of people that are moving away. You have the op uh, option of, of paying uh, a small fee to the church as part of your taxes. You have a lot of people opting out of that, but you have even more people that actually decide, yeah, I, I still want to get married in a church. I still want to be uh, engaged and support. Uh, support some of the cultural component. It is a small piece of my identity. Maybe I want my children to be raised within that tradition, even though I don't necessarily uh, strictly believe. So you still have a lot of christenings, you still have um, a lot of the big events, um, but they're not going to church and it's not necessarily uh, shaping their daily lives in, in a major way. Now, of course, one of the other misconceptions is, is that Denmark does not have uh, more radical groups or, or, or more um, zealous or fundamentalist groups. Uh, and I mean that in some instances in, in a negative context and some in, in a positive context, in that you do have communities which um, are, are some of the, the more strict um, groups within, in, within the faith um, that, that do have compounds, they have, uh, they have communities. 
uh, around Denmark. Um, and you know, they're from what I've seen, of course, because they're, they're, they largely keep to themselves, um, and uh, and aren't um, over or aggressively involved involved in a lot of stuff. Um, where they do pop up a little bit is is in some kind of um, extreme political um, areas where they do kind of blend faith and politics a little bit. Um, but what I do see far more often is even with people that are that are more devout or are more firm believers, um, there's uh, there's one group and I'm I'm not sure I think they might be witnesses um, that that have a fairly active presence around around Copenhagen, um, but. Where in the U.S., you it's not uncommon to see people with signs telling everyone they're going to hell, or um, to have uh, missionaries that are kind of in your face and, and, and kind of wrangling for your time. Um, these guys, they'll be they'll be standing there and they'll have a couple of their books, a couple of flyers, um, and they don't approach you. They they don't talk to you. It's purely um, purely opt in. So if you if you were to choose to to approach them. Uh, and to converse with them, then then you know they'll be happy to engage you. Um, there's a surprisingly large uh, group of Scientologists here, uh, although I'm not sure if it's so much that there are a lot of Scientologists so much as the Church of Scientology has invested a lot of money uh, here, uh, and so they'll set up and they'll be present a, a little bit. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think I think the defining thing is is very much that um, even if you are more to about in your faith, and, and, and that if you are more um, more committed to it, um, you still, for the most part, keep to yourself, and, and, and your faith is more of a personal thing. Uh, it's something that you believe, it's something that you participate in, uh, that you engage in, uh, and that shapes your behavior. Um, but I think uh, it's much less a case of, of being overt about it, uh, and I think there's much less social pressure and social reward for being overt. Uh, about it. I think there's a, and I mean this is biased as an atheist from a conservative area, right? But I think that there's a, there's a lot of situations in the U.S. Uh, where we have a very, a lot of pressure to be overt in the presence of our faith. So people go out of their way to showcase it. They go out of their way to um, to uh, uh, apply it to others and, and, and pressure on to others um, in, in a way that, that really can, I think, be much, much less um, genuine. Um, and it, it definitely creates all sorts of, of secondary issues. Um, and I think the, from what I've seen, the, the application of faith here tends to be much healthier. Um, there's much less focus on uh, religious guilt. Um, you don't see a lot of the um, virginity pledges and and um, you know really warped abstinence-based sex education narrative and things along those lines. So it's much more. Let's look at you know here's here's my faith. Here's what I believe. Uh, here's what I'll explore and how I can explore it. It's a, maybe it's a part of my identity, usually in a more moderate way, um, and um, and and that's how it gets applied. Now, of course, there is another group which is actually, um, you know, increasingly present and fairly present, uh, and you do have a large Muslim population, relatively large Muslim population, uh, in Denmark. Probably not necessarily large in comparison to uh, the United States, but um, for Denmark, uh, quite large, um, and and that's a very different community uh, in that it, it you, you do have a lot of a, a lot of spectrum. Um, it does tend to be perhaps a little bit more devout and a little bit more overt in, in, in what they're asking for and what they're applying, uh, which, uh, which causes cultural tension and cultural clash and has created a lot of um, issues uh, recently just because you have different political and religious ideologies that are blending together now. Um, and, um, and, and, and also I think because the, the populations that have, that have come in, the, the Muslim populations, um, many have been fleeing to Denmark in part because of persecution of their faith, um, or, it's, it, it's an, uh, or, or not persecution of their faith, but per persecution of um, their interpretation of their faith, or coming out of conflict zones. Um, and so you do get uh, populations that are um, 
you know, more centered around their faith, and, and that perhaps also uh, where faith is, is uh, being used more heavily to define identity and cultural identity. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of a whole different uh, area um, than what the original question was, was kind of, you know, uh, religion from a maybe Judeo-Christian uh, tradition uh, here in Denmark. Um, and then I guess the other part is that there is a small Jewish community here, um, not, not much, um, I forget what it is, um, but, but quite tiny. Um, but yeah, they are active, uh, but I think it is mostly, I want to say Orthodox, uh, which maybe I'll be completely wrong in its reform. Um, but that is my general observations about faith here in Denmark. Uh, on this one, I'm going to challenge you all to keep your comments supportive and to discuss from, you know, the same place where Denmark 101 comes from. Um, I, I don't want to see any kind of uh, racial or religious nonsensical bullshit. Um, so that's my ask from you, uh, but do feel free to explain your interpretation and your personal interpretation uh, and how you see that fit, especially compared to um, perhaps uh, the U.S., especially if you're a Dane and you have lived in the U.S. Uh, so, as always, thank you for the questions and for challenging me to think about how to cover them and what my take is on them. As always, please share and give the video a like.